Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Trade the Chain. It is Thursday, April 22nd, and we all woke up a little bit better today. The market seems to be cushioning the blow from the last three days, so we're all very happy about that. Um, seeing green in the portfolio never hurts. Do want to say one of the things today I noticed is we have an STMX Stormex doing a their first AMA on their Discord channel. So um, that's coming up, I think, in uh, about an hour and 45 minutes or so. So if you are an STMX uh, fan, definitely want to hop over their uh, Discord channel and see what Simon and the team over there has to say. But here I am, joined. Alex, with... Alex. What? You got to do this over because it's at 7 p.m. UTC, which means it'll have already happened by the time this airs. Oh, yeah, good point. Fuck. All right. You had one job. And I fucked it up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Trade the Chain. It is Thursday, April 22nd, and we are all a little happier today. There's a little more green in the seas of crypto land as the cushion of the last three days blow uh, has subsided. I'm joined with the best hair in crypto and metal star drinking champion, Ryan Gorman. I'm, yeah, also, <laughs> I'm also joined by Monty and CJ, our esteemed crypto analyst from marketrebellion.com. And uh, folks, one of the things I just wanted to bring up real quick in the opener here today was I hope you caught the uh, first AMA of Stormex. So if you are an STMX fan, Stormex uh, held their first AMA today. Um, so definitely hop on their Discord, grab the replay, do what you need to do, see what Simon and the crew had to say about any updates with the company. Um, but without further ado, Ryan, please take us away. Thanks, Alex. This is just a reminder that all content provided by Trade the Chain and Market Rebellion is strictly for educational and informational purposes only. Absolutely none of this is investment advice. You should you should never listen to us. Don't do it. Trade the Chain is brought to you by TradeTheChain.com, a global 24-7 community of traders across 23 time zones of all ages, all abilities, all backgrounds, and all skill levels, all using AI-driven sentiment indicators and actionable alerts to help you beat the market. If yeah. you do... Yeah, buddy. If you too want to trade like a crypto insider and you're not yet a member of Trade the Chain, our great community, check out tradethechain.com and learn more. Very exciting. That was very <laughs> exciting. That was dramatic. <laughs> and marketrebellion.com forward slash crypto. This is Monty and myself and our community at Market Rebellion. And with us, you get exclusive access to trade insights on a weekly basis, entries, exits, stop losses, and updates throughout the week. Also, you get access to our macro portfolio allocations, a pro charting platform, a trading education curriculum, and an elite community of traders all throughout the world and much more. If you're serious about trading crypto, this is the service that gives you everything you need all in one place. You can start your first month trial for just a dollar at marketrebellion.com slash crypto. We appreciate that, guys. And uh, before we begin into the analysis, anything on the mind? Mm. I, I have something. I have something. Oh. <clears throat> uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you saw Ryan and myself in Puerto Rico doing a little exploring, a little vacationing. I just want to add that uh, what's come out today is one of the reasons why everybody should look at Puerto Rico if you're in the U.S. Uh, apparently, the administration is looking to propose a 43.4% capital gains uh tax in the u.s that's dramatic that is a lot really of money. Dramatic. yeah really high the and, uh, and, and income tax hikes as well right um i mean he's going to hike taxes on uh the wealthy and the uh the the, the super rich so any of you who are fortunate enough that are in our viewership to fall within those tax brackets um you know it's just something to keep in mind and consider going forward Act 60. Act 60 in Puerto Rico. Take a look. No capital gains tax. All right, let's move on. I, I digress. Sorry, CJ. Go ahead. You guys are Puerto Rico shills. 
Um, but I like it and I'll, I'll be down there as well. However, the, I've heard the potholes are, are pretty. Potholes are horrible. They're, they're only, they're only as bad as the person driving you around. And let me tell you a story about a real estate agent. Oh, <laughs> she actually, I'll keep it short, but she actually was aiming for potholes and driving into them on purpose and saying, this one's for you, Alex. And she kept hitting like multiple hot potholes in her Lexus, which the suspension was shot and it was covered in dents and scratches and missing pieces of paint because she just drove her car into everything she could find. I've never seen anyone play bumper cars with their car in real life. It was amazing. It was amazing. And and I will just say, <laughs> CJ, uh, with regards to the potholes, it is one of those uh, places where you want to think twice before having your crypto Lambo. So potholes. Yeah. Capital gains tax. I'll go with the potholes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at the price action. Um, <laughs> not much to report today. Um, you know, we will go into some technical analysis on various other altcoins that I think a little bit are more interesting in terms of price action. We've seen the DeFi perpetual index absolutely go parabolic this morning, but not yet with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is is almost holding on just by a thread here. Um, however, Monty and I, and, and something we had talked about yesterday and this morning as well, is that I do expect this 51 level to hold. I think we go below 49. It's going to be very concerning in terms of this overall MACD crossover. But all I can say is that the vast majority of indicators, including fundamental metrics, like the fact that we're seeing more Bitcoin in cold storage, um, the large holders are not letting go of their coins. And to me, that just means that we're likely not at the top. In fact, we may even be at the sixth inning still in the midst of say a 25 to 30% correction from the recent top. We saw that in 2016 and 2017. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw something like that similar here. Being said, we're not seeing the on-chain volume, which would suggest breaking below that previous swing low of 51K. So just a brief review. Um, if you didn't catch our show yesterday, I'm going to draw a little bit. But key support right here. We touched it, and that level was the same as our previous higher low um, back in uh, March. So it's very important that we stay above this level. If we drop below then we could test down to that next channel at around 45K. However, when you look at the CCI, oversold territory, same thing with uh, the Stoke, and those are beginning to turn over up into positive territory. And if we look at what had happened at our previous uh, downturns, um, we eventually saw that starting to peak up as we got bullish engulfing candles moving forward, both this time as well as the second time in just a few weeks later when we had that down crease. We haven't had a bullish engulfing candle yet. And what I mean by that is just a massive green engulfing candle. I think if we can get something like that following up, um, we're gonna end up probably going back to bullish territory. But this is a critical level here at 49K. I think that's also where likely a lot of liquidations could potentially take place if we drop down there too quickly. What I have to say is that I'm concerned about the MACD, same thing I said yesterday, but from on-chain metrics, from the fundamentals, it's not necessarily suggesting that we go below those price levels. Monty, what's your take? You're silent. I mean, <clears throat> you are Mr. Short, so uh, I expect some silence as the gears start turning after hearing well, that. You're like- Bitcoin, I mean- I love Bitcoin, but right now it's feeling like a bit of a snooze fest. I mean, the action is just <laughs> elsewhere in the space, you know? We talked yesterday about the Bitcoin dominance chart, so I want to quickly bring that back up because I think it's worth mentioning that we actually broke below 50% for the first time since 2018. And like I mentioned, this was actually at the end of 2017 leading up to 2018 when we saw Bitcoin hit that first all-time high, but we also saw... I mean, incredible amounts of retail speculation into the alts like Litecoin and Ripple. And, you know, we're venturing down a sim similar avenue here as Bitcoin dominance is really falling. And I think it's no secret with where it's going today. I mean, Ryan's T-shirt says it all. Look at ETH. This thing is just absolutely on a tear today. Ripping and, up. You know, it's no surprise. We've talked about the potential for DeFi to, you know, appeal to retail traders 
you know, Dogecoin saw some incredible volume that's now cooling off. But I think, you know, look at this trade volume from ETH. It's really, really worth noting. And over on the trade to chain dashboard, you can see the relative trading volume for ETH is up 62%. So, I mean, it's, it's closing in on the average trading volume of Bitcoin. And I think this is an important, you know, an important thing to take note of. I mentioned yesterday, it's particularly significant when we see ETH making moves when Bitcoin's trading sideways. And, you know, we reference this chart a lot, the DeFi perpetual index. But if you just look at the amount of wow. money locked in DeFi in just the last day, we've gone from 55 billion to upwards of 61 billion. So that's 5 billion locked in just a 24 hour period. So How obviously there's, there's tremendous demand in the EFI sector. Uh, you can see Maker performing tremendously well, Compound, Uni, Aave, pretty much all DeFi assets are performing well today. And, you know, Ethereum is obviously benefiting from that. But like I said, the most noteworthy thing is, I mean, we've seen this, we've seen this go up before, but not when Bitcoin is trading sideways. So I think it's really interesting that despite the lackluster price action of Bitcoin, we're still getting plenty of speculation into ETH and a lot of other DeFi assets. So that DeFi Pulse chart shows we're, we're, we're back up, what, 5 billion in total value locked since yesterday. When you look at the appreciation in ETH prices, what is it up, like 6%, 7% from yesterday? So a good deal of that rise in total value locked has to be due to the appreciation of ETH, right? Because going up 5 billion is almost, it's about 10%, a little under 10% from where it was yesterday. So I don't necessarily think that more money was actually locked or a substantial amount of money was locked. It's just the appreciation of the ETH locked itself that's driving up the total value locked. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with you uh, to a very fair extent on that because it's also when the DeFi pulse goes uh, down, we have that retraction. But the um, uh, the value of it uh, with locked in amounts did change, right? So, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, you look at various DeFi coins in the space and one we're, you know, one of those uh, coins, those uh, DeFi universe coins that we're going to cover today, Solana, ticker SOL, mm -hmm. Um, you know, th these things are shooting up. And so I, I think it's a combination of the both. But what's really great is the fact that we saw ETH had another all time high all by itself and that didn't have to, didn't get didn't get help from Big Brother. Yeah, no, that uh, that decoupling, um, I think, is it's important because it's always been so correlated to the price of Bitcoin and for it to decouple and go up on its own while Bitcoin is stagnating, as Monty has pointed out, uh, it shows that perhaps this is kind of an inflection point for the DeFi space uh, as it starts to really gain much more momentum than it had last summer when people were talking about it and projects were going through the roof in terms of total value. There's actual utility now and the people are actually using these things on a daily basis versus just yield farming. So I think this is a really important spot for ETH. I don't think it's going to 10K like people like Moon Carl are saying on uh, on Twitter, but I oh. think, you know, it's uh, it, it has room to run provided these projects continue to gain momentum. The ETH Maxi, not going with 10K ETH. That's, uh, was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's a reasonable number though. Like maybe, sure, eventually it'll hit 10K, but so will a loaf of bread if you go down far enough down the, the time horizon of inflation, I mean, Sure. We got we got the we got the title for this video. Ryan predicts loaf of bread 10k. <laughs> I'm down with that. Let's do it. One thing I want to ask you guys before moving to Solana, that's kind of been a concern of mine, is all of the easy money that's been made on the BSC, uh, you know, Binance chain, things like Pancake Swap, um, you know, all of those meme coins that are are just a joke, like literally a meme being pumped by TikTokers. When that type of capital is flowing into the market, does it signal a potential top or a very, you know, sharp reversion? What I mean, does that oh, scare yeah. you guys? Oh, I'll tell you right now, the whole Doge uh, epidemic 
um, because that's really what it is. It's almost like a doge pandemic. Um, and that has really frightened me over the last, uh, the course of the last month, um, even back, you know, to the beginning of the year, but really over the last month, because once we started getting a lot of uh, new brand new crypto retail investors in, and that price started pumping because they were watching those TikToks and the Twitters and the YouTube influencers. But what happens is as quickly as that money appears into the market space, the when they get burnt is how is the same quickness, it disappears from the space. You know Look what happened? Go, go ahead, ahead, Monty. Okay, one thing I will say, you know, I always harp on this hierarchy of projects within the crypto space. And I agree that like retail traders getting burned is not good ultimately for like a long-term adoption. But in the short term, you know, I do think that this money that's being taken out of the hands of these sort of noob TikTok traders does go into the hands of more, you know, intelligent, like shark-like traders that then move it upstream into more viable assets. So yeah, I, I, it does, you know, it's definitely not good that traders are getting burned and might discourage them from investing later. But, you know, that capital flooding into the space, I think ultimately ends up being a good thing for, yep. you know, Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. I I agree. But, the, the you know, and one of the reasons why I, I'm not wavering at all in the thinking of uh, our market cycle projections that we've all discussed openly over the last four months is because, well, one, I do believe that a huge vacuum of money that's disappearing from newbie crypto traders who just got in the space with all the publicity is one large uh, uh, mechanism of the hampering of the markets right now. And what my belief is, is that once this vacuum subsides and prices stabilize and the order books come to normalcy, we're going to continue the ride up. But I think it was that large vacuum that influx in and that uh, blowout out that created what we have here or a major contributor of it. I think one of my main concerns with like these TikTok videos, right? You have a, a project like SafeMoon, which oh. I got... I don't know, three or four different friends. I had three or four different friends yesterday messaging me, texting me, WhatsApping me. What's this safe moon? Should I sell my safe moon? I'm like, why did you buy safe moon? Right. And one of my friends made a lot of money on it. And he texted me about it after it went down 30%. He's like, is this safe moon a scam? I'm like, I think you should not have ever bought it. He's like, yeah, but I made a ton of money. I'm like, yeah, sell, 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 sell. sell. Get out now before it really circles the drain. Because yeah. it was already on its way down. Right. So something like this, where it was clearly just pumped up by a bunch of teenagers, this is a problem. And I don't know how we get rid of projects like this, where it's clearly just a pump and dump. And I mean, to a large extent, we've been able to root these things out of traditional markets. And I'm not sure what needs to be done in order for us to root them out of, you know, crypto markets, because it's a black eye. It's a stain on the industry when something like that goes up or like what Doge goes up or uh, some of these other things that are happening. And I it just, until activity like this stops, it's just, it's an impediment and it will keep yeah. the mass, like the mass affluent or the, the retail investor from truly embracing crypto. And, and just to cap that, listen, any, anybody got into uh, any of these projects that I and clearly uh, my, my colleagues here don't believe in, but made a crap load of money, like riding Safe Moon up and somehow getting out at the right time or Doge, God bless you. I'm just saying the majority are on the downside. They're painting the top and they're taking their losses uh, as they go down. By the time you're hearing about it on TikTok, people are already selling. Should I, get this, it. should I get in the safe moon now? Is it a good buy? Yeah, at the discount. Get it. All right. CJ, <laughs> CJ, CJ looks really interested in bringing this back to a grown-up show now. It's an interesting psychological concept, though. Like, if you get introduced to something like Safe Moon and you're the first, you know, that's your first experience with investing, you make a ton of money right off the bat. You know, that's a high. Like, you're feeling like you're a genius or something, even though it might be the first time you're in the market. Then you lose that money, say, on the way down, that's going to feel twice as worse than however that high felt good. That's kind of just how things work um, psychologically when it comes to trading. But that initial high that people feel, I think it may be enough to keep them coming back. Um, if they're, they're just capital. They're just going to be chasing a white rabbit, though, right? Like, you know, it, I don't know. I don't know that that's a good thing. 
because it keeps them from making smart decisions and they take bigger risks and bigger risks. It's like the guy who goes to the casino and his first night wins like $3,000 on the roulette table. And then the next night he loses 2000. So he gets 2000 more. He's like, I'm going to make it all back and more. And then he ends up like signing over the deed to his house by the end. Of why, the why you know, would I just you, don't think. Why would you tell the story of the, of my first time gambling like that? <laughs> yeah. That's private. Vegas, days in Vegas, Ryan, come on. Uh, no, I'm just saying like, you see like people in casinos, they're just degenerate gamblers. And like, I literally saw a guy sign over the deed to his house one time in a casino. Like, it's just these, these people just, you know, and, and you, there's a risk that in the crypto market, cause it's unregulated to a degree and it doesn't have the structure that traditional assets have. It, it's just, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's a bigger risk than it would be if it were equities. Well said, well said, let's move on to Solana. Alex, you wanted me to mention this uh, project. Any particular reason fundamentally before we go into the technicals you'd like to kind of- Yeah, argue? yeah, no, it's, it's you know, it's one of the, so Solana is one of these things that came out one to great fanfare. A lot of people, uh, you know, embrace this project. Um, it's able to do 65,000 uh, plus transactions per second. Uh, to put that in comparison, Ethereum is able to do 18.3 thousand uh, or 18.3 transactions per second. Um, and, you know, uh, things such as uh, Radium and uh, Serum have launched on Solana. It's, it's popular among the DeFi group. Um, and it's really just been consistently outperforming and moving up. And it hasn't been one of these hype and bubble things that we all make fun of. So yeah, from a fundamental standpoint, I think it has be, is become an important uh, part of the infrastructure for DeFi. Yeah, I think Solana is going to be, I mean, it already is really big, but I think it is going to continue to be big and dominant in the space um, for the reasons that you kind of mentioned. Also a lot of interesting players backing it as well. From a tactical perspective, um, I've mentioned this before, but it's always nice when you see the trend above the top Keltner channel. That's pretty much exactly what we've seen um, for the majority of this uptrend, and we're still even trending higher. Um, we found support multiple times at the bottom band, and until we kind of break below that, like let's say we have a, a break and a firm close at 20, then I probably wouldn't be interested in this project. Um, but due to the market cycle, uh, the stages in which we're in, due to how well Ethereum and DeFi are performing, I don't know if I really expect that to occur. I expect uh, this asset to likely continue to trend, um, namely because we're just already in such a bullish posture. And like Monty stated earlier, uh, Bitcoin being a snooze fest. People are looking for uh, they're looking for other opportunities, and I think Solana is a very attractive option for a lot of traders. Not only from the technicals, but also for the reasons that Alex mentions. All right, uh, Ryan, what is the news of the day? Uh, I know you shared it with us before taping, and it was very um, it was very interesting because you touched about it. It's vindication, if nothing else. Um, you know, earlier this week when I was saying Bitcoin may or may not live to see the light of day as the world's, you know, most used or highest market cap cryptocurrency or digital asset, I received a lot of flack for it. Derision, some might say. And I, I stuck by it and I will stick by it. And, you know, City uh, earlier today in an interview with Decrypt, one of their analysts who may or may not watch Trade the Chain, if you do watch, hey, buddy. Um, but uh, they, they put out some commentary where they think Ethereum will actually, out, in the long run, outpace Bitcoin because Bitcoin can't be used transactionally and it doesn't have the throughput or the advanced functionality like smart contracts that Ethereum does. It just basically doesn't have the utility. And Bitcoin, it will always be valuable. It'll always have its purpose as a store of value. But in the long run, City thinks that either Ethereum or potentially Polkadot, which I think Alex may have mentioned during the um, during that discussion earlier this week, uh, one of those two is likely to surpass Bitcoin in the not too distant future. So I think you know a lot of people and smart money and institutions are starting to see that Bitcoin, just because it's the first cryptocurrency, doesn't mean it will always be the biggest. And um, you know. Iteration and improvement through newer, 
more varied projects and different types of assets ultimately will lead to a uh, higher diversification and Bitcoin, you know, riding down that dominance chart. Um, and perhaps sooner than later, I don't think it'll happen anytime soon, but you know, in the long run, once people start using crypto transactionally, I can see it, uh, you know, eventually being overtaken. Interesting. I did not know that Ryan was such an influencer. Obviously, you have the likes of City just making complete articles over his uh, arguments here on Trade the Chain. So for all of you that give him flack, just remember, the big boys are watching him. They're hanging on every word. Uh, <laughs> CJ, Monty, uh, any, any comments or concerns or parting words? I don't really have an opinion on uh, the claim Ryan just meant. Um, it could happen, you know, but we're just here to make money and trade. And uh, if that opportunity presents itself, then I'll be more than happy to jump on board. Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree with Ryan's argument. I believe in Bitcoin as much as any anyone. But, you know, it makes sense that it gives up some of this market share because it does serve a very limited utility in storing value. And I think, you know, just greater crypto adoption is going to lead to uh, more people, you know, finding the utility of Ethereum and finding the utility of assets like Polkadot. So, yeah, I, I, P Bitcoin maxless might get mad that Ryan's saying that, you know, it might not be the biggest crypto, but I think it's still healthy for the crypto space and wouldn't be bad for Bitcoin at all. No, I don't think it's bad because Bitcoin's value will always be there. And, you know, that's something that City also pointed out. It'll always be buffeted by use of other cryptocurrencies because Bitcoin will always be that, you know, that gateway crypto and it'll always have its store of value and it will always, you know, be that safe haven, so to speak, because it really is just kind of independent of everything else. But it just, yeah, it doesn't have utility. So outside of that, you know. Gateway, you know, gateway crypto. I like it. Um, and all, all the terminology we've uh, coined on this show, gateway crypto, honey hole. Uh, ignition assets, you know, we should have our own like dictionary. <laughs> um, and, and, and to CJ's uh, point um, about trading and making money, uh, we're going to further investigate, expand into our uh, into bridging between chains and how that is coming along. Um, as you guys know, watch regularly. Uh, I'm a big proponent of zero exchange and what they're doing um, is the first platform to be doing that bridging. And it's becoming more interesting every day. Uh, to me. So um, we're going to we're going to kind of dive into that uh, possibly early next week um, and figure that out for you guys and maybe do a video on it and how to do it and how it works. Uh, also, don't forget, um, please, if you like us or even if you don't like us, hit the like button. Hulk it, smash it, do what you got to do. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Occasionally we have we are interesting. And uh, you definitely want to be alerted for when those episodes drop. Um, and then two, visit marketrebellion.com forward slash crypto and tradethechain.com. Um, folks, we will see you tomorrow. So hang on to those handlebars. No honey holes today. And hopefully greener pastures in the order books tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.